Welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Navani, Total Connector. You know, like never before, uh, people are really hungry for solutions. Something beyond hope, you know, something beyond, you know, some kind of fantasies. Uh, but it's really time for, you know, giving people a concrete, you know, specific so solution focused vision. And that's why, you know, I'm, I'm really focused now on this film project, Human Life Rooted in Bitcoin. I hope you've already read my short brainstorm article. It's actually a pitch for everybody, uh, you know, for um, uh, filmmakers, producers, investors, uh, Bitcoiners, uh, scientists. Um, and already, you know, a lot of people have gotten in touch with me. Uh, amazing people, you know, who are building like, uh, you know, uh, homes, you know, on land, on, on water like Grand Grumman. So without further ado, I'm, I'm really excited to announce this next talk with uh, three other Iranians like myself. I'm, you know, I'm originally born in Iran. So it's, um, so I'm really excited to have this talk with Arman Tale, who is, by the way, my cousin. He, he lives and works in Germany. Then we have Zara Amini and Zia Saad, who by, by now, you know, a lot of you know him, know him because he's also, you know, a lot, oftentimes mentioned, you know, by Alex Gladstein, Human Rights Foundation, or Alex, or Andreas Antonopoulos. So it's really exciting talk. We're going to brainstorm about our vision and perspectives, how we can, you know, touch the hearts, minds, intellect, the brains of the people and really offer people a, a really specific concrete solution and that is whatever you want to call it you know uh, um, you know a human civilization a free, a free private cities a citadel city or society rooted in bitcoin totally transformationally structured in a you know in, a, in an unimaginable way rooted in bitcoin with deflationary economics free market principles true freedom right so uh yeah without further ado this is gonna be an awesome exciting talk let me know what you think and make sure you follow me on twitter linkedin facebook uh telegram what have you please retweet it share it and subscribe to my youtube channel to my you know all the podcast platforms out there write me a positive review if, if you love this uh, talks my, my show as much you know as much as i did and well, uh, thank you so much again for your support and for listening. And if you in any shape or form can support us in this endeavor, in this project, this film project, whatever that is with you know, your skills, your talents, the resources you have, or you want to sponsor us, invest in us, uh, you know, produce the film, co-produce the film, or help us in any shape or form, please get in touch with me. My email is hello at the And, and yeah, my DMs are open. So thank you so much again, and uh, I'll see you soon again. Bye. Hey, 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 welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Dabani, the Total Connector. I'm really pleased and excited to have this uh, amazing talk, this uh, sort of a, um, a panel discussion with my friends from uh, originally. All We're all from originally from Iran, but somehow it's sort of Iranian diaspora. So it's uh, Zara uh, and Hi. Zia. Hi, how are you doing? Hey there, hey there. And Arman uh, from uh, he's in Hamburg in Germany. So hey. thanks so much again for your, guys for your time. And yeah, why don't we just kick it off? Why don't we just uh, start off with you, Zara? Um, can you tell me and you know our listeners? A little bit about yourself, like what your past with Bitcoin, what what is what was your you know your your vision, your your intention behind Bitcoin. What do you see? What do you, what do you see? What is the bigger picture like when you? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, my story is a, a little bit like um, like other people who say that we heard about this thing, but we didn't really um, just. Um, you know, we didn't see it. <laughs> uh, I first heard this word in a podcast about Silk Road, you know, Silk Road, that's a uh, website, Amazon of drug. And uh, then it was interesting for me, but it was not like it didn't capture my attention. I, it, it was just a word I heard and I said, okay, cool. Is there some kind of tool like that? And afterwards, um, I heard it in Mr. Robot series. 
Um, and the third time I was in like a job interview or something. And uh, I, hear, I heard about Dogecoin alongside with Bitcoin. And uh, some words like dark web or uh, clear web. And I said, okay, isn't this the only internet we know? So I started talking to my friends about it and stuff. Um, one of my friends bought me a magazine about Russell Briggs. Russell Briggs uh, interview and story and all that stuff because I was really interested in uh, everyone I saw, I just talked about Silk Road. <laughs> it was like really uh, the most amazing story I've heard in that period of time. And then I, I learned about these buzzwords and I started to comprehend that this idea is a very strong idea um, because it's here to make a difference. It's here to change. It wants to change the society the, uh, with some very, very basic rules. It's like, if you do the right thing, I'm going to reward you. If you do the wrong thing, you're out of the network. This is like basic, um, basic nature of every human. And you can use this to run something big, run some kind of uh, economical, uh, financial and economic um, base. So I just started um, searching and I didn't know that we have a community in Iran. And I was like in Reddit asking, how can I uh, buy Bitcoin? How can I, you know, um, learn about it and own it and stuff? And then I just searched um, very randomly uh, Bitcoin in Twitter, in Persian. And I found this amazing friend, um, Hadi Nemati. Uh, it's our mutual friend. With Zia. And he introduced me to the community. Then I got connected with Zia and other people. So I just started learning. Um, and I learned about the, I, again, I started with the idea because this is some very, very uh, strong idea. Uh, I started with passion then um, Bcash, and then um, Hashcash, and then we have this beautiful thing called Bitcoin. So uh, when I covered all the basics, uh, I just started knowing about the details. So uh, why I, I said this long story, it was simply because I wanted to tell you that you need to know why first, and then you need to go to the next step. I know my why, and that why is because Bitcoin is here to change something big, to change society, to change how we um, behave in modern world, and to just make a new world. So this is why. This is my why, and... You need to learn and know your own why and then learn about it. This is the most effective way in my personal idea. Well, thanks for sharing. Fascinating story. Let me just ask you what, um, you know, I always heard that the, the, the median average age of the, you know, of majority of Iran's population is around 30, 35 years old. Is that true? Like 70 to 80% of, of Iran's population is around like 30. 30. Is, that, is that correct? Is that true? I'm not really sure. But like, but like relatively, yeah. relatively young. I mean, that's the, the point. Yes, is it? exactly. Yeah, sort of the demographics is, yeah. is like that, right? So I'm just saying, exactly. because you say, you know, because you, you know, you all sort of, I mean, I, I already belong to the older generation because I'm like, 48 years old, so I feel, I, but I feel much younger than, than I look like. So anyway, so uh, I think people are hungry. Do you think people, the, the, the young generation of Iran, 
they're hungry now, you know, for a change, for a real transformation, for a vision? Um, yes. Uh, okay, you know, <laughs> I want to put it in right words because it's not a young generation of Iran or young generation of well, some place. Uh, it's everyone. You know, the world is kind of on fire, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And the pandemic came and uh, everything had got worse. Um, I mean, everyone wants a change, a good change. We know some new things and this is just so um, obvious to us right now. Like central um, centralization of power or money is bad. Okay, yes, I know it's bad because I have seen it. I have... Um, I have been hurt by it. So yes, I know it's that you do not need to um, explain things to other people in the way that you needed to before, mm -hmm. because we are connected more than ever and we can share our stories, we can learn and hear. So everyone, almost everyone in their country um, just, become conscious and see that they have big problems and they want to change. So yes, in Iran, we want change. Um, in other places, we want change because it's not working anymore. Right. The way, um, yeah, the way authorities are running the world is not effective. It's not working. Yeah. We simply need to. Yeah. And, you know, historically speaking, I mean, if you look at the history and, uh, you know, the people of Iran, what they've gone through in all these ages, will it be hundreds of years or thousands of years? It's because, you know, it's always it's always in history everywhere like that, you know, out of necessity comes creativity, you know. So I think people. Yeah. So, Zia, you know, uh, let me come to you. Uh, you know, you actually you're pretty internationally, globally very famous. But because every time, you know, if you listen to Andreas Antonopoulos, or Alex Gladstein of the Human Rights Foundation, every time there's a practical example, like whether it be Venezuela or Iran, they mention you, they mention a specific case, and then they mention you, you know, your testimonials, you know, the, 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 the things you describe, you know, how, how Bitcoin can work in countries like Iran. So, uh, yeah, what, I mean, I've already had you on my show, so people, most, most of my listeners know you already, but maybe you want to, you know, tell a little bit about your background. Yeah, thank you. I, I don't know about uh, Andreas, but I, I know Alex. Uh, uh, we've talked together a lot, and I've been on a podcast with him before on the Let's Talk Bitcoin podcast. Yeah, and uh, he's a great guy. Andreas is a great guy too. I've learned a lot from both of them. So I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. As you said, uh, uh, I guess your listeners know me. Uh, I'm a big Bitcoiner living in, in in Iran, and I'm pretty active on Twitter. I've uh, I've uh, I've been active in the Persian in the Farsi community, in the Iranian community, most of the time, uh, because information about Bitcoin more than the English community, because there's a lot of resources. There. Yeah. And uh, my first, uh, like how I got into Bitcoin, it was uh, in uh, late 2016 or late 2017. I've seen the name Bitcoin before from like piracy websites, or, like Pirate Bay and all that stuff uh, on, the, on their de donation page. But I've never been uh, interested in uh, Googling it. So a friend came to me and said, I want to build this hardware. I, I come from a... Actually, from uh, uh, from a literature background, but I'm very interested in technology and hardware, particularly. And he came to me and told me that I want to build a mining rig. And I told him what's a mining rig. He said that they somehow do a procedure on uh, like uh, some hardware to put a lot of uh, GPUs on that. And I, and I looked it up and I told them that I can do this for you. And I searched a little bit about it because I got interested at that time because 
gate like somehow it gave magic money for, for free yeah uh and uh then i uh got down the rabbit hole like in no time because it it, it, it overlapped with my literature studies regarding uh like uh, power relations like uh the hierarchies and all of these stuff that we oh, we know which are very bad regarding governments and all of that so it, it clicked and uh, I, I liked the idea i read about it and i i started working with bitcoin businesses exchanges here in iran and i yeah got up the yeah uh this this space and yeah this is the story that's really fascinating insights, you know. Um, when was it? Uh, I think you recently also went on John Vallis' uh, Rapid Bitcoin Fire podcast. That was that was pretty cool because there were like people from Venezuela and I think Turkey and you from Iran, right? So uh, yeah, I retweeted. Exactly, Argentina. I retweeted that because it was really interesting. Um, the questions also were pretty good from from John Vallis. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so let's. Um, so for the record, uh, Arman is my cousin. Just for the record, so <laughs> I, I until recently I didn't even know that I had uh, I had a cousin because I have, we haven't actually never we've never seen each other, right? I mean, uh, literally. Yeah, it's, exactly. I mean, I, you left Iran way before uh, my dad was even married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so. Just for the explain, just for um, for clarity, uh, Arman is the son of my mother's brother, my dai, as we say, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Arman, why don't you tell a little bit about yourself? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I mean, talking with Zia Zara, with you, Kevin. I mean, uh, I'm relatively new, as you know, like in Bitcoin community. Uh, I'm relatively new because I, I had a bit different path like i left iran uh, when was it like in 2009 you remember the uh, the protest in uh, in the year 88 the the green protest there was like our house it was close to close to to shiraz university and uh, yeah it was it was crazy i mean yeah then somehow some other stuff happened, you know, I wasn't really planning to, to go outside, but my parents, especially my mom, they were like, yeah, this is not really good. It's like, uh, let, let's seek for, for something different. So yeah, but by that time, I think I was 16 or 17. Then we went to, to Malaysia and uh, anyway, long story short, uh, yeah, I was living in Malaysia for almost seven years. I uh, did my bachelor degree. I mean, finalized the, the high school, then went to college, bachelor degree. I did mechanical engineering. Then I, I came over to, to Germany, uh, to north part of Germany, a city called Flensburg. Then I did my master's degree in wind engineering. And, you know, you always have to, the first thing, you, you know, you want to, to get independent. So you want to somehow to put the time, your parents, they are somehow supporting you to uh, concentrate more on your time and come up with whatever you're good with, creativity, and uh, of course, somehow glimpse into technology. But anyhow, first you want to get independent, earn some money during the, the study time. Like when I was in Malaysia, it's totally like, it's illegal to work. I mean, you might be able to work, but if they find out, you, you will get deported straight away. And, uh, but yeah, then here in Germany, then as an international student, there are like different rules. You can only work 120 days, like full, full working day, like eight hours per day. But anyhow, if you find some student job, you, you can somehow get a bit more uh, independence. And then, uh, Anyway, yeah, then I finalized my, my master degree. I started working in a basically wind turbine manufacturer company. Uh, so yeah, we are supplying like, but mostly European countries and unfortunately Iran, I mean, that's whole another topic. It's, they are making some progress, but where are most of the money going to? <laughs> it's, anyway, but uh, yeah, I, I got to know Bitcoin 
basically in the, the, the recent hype. I mean, I, I heard about Bitcoin, but I never really uh, searched it. I was like, okay, I, I need to, to earn some money. You know, I need to get a bit more independent and then try to, okay, I'm, I, I, I think my, my time, they can value it in a, in a different way. But then I, I, I got deeper down into, into Bitcoin. I mean, every day, like, it's like how, how Plan B just said it. Like, once you see it, there is no way I'm seeing it. It's like, <laughs> uh, anyway, but it's, it's a pleasure to, to be here with you guys. And as a, as a main hobby, I mean, that, that is somehow my, my profession at the moment. But I also make music. I, I produce some music. I play in a band. I, I used to play in different bands, but uh, yeah, that is somehow <laughs> my other part of life. But uh, yeah, at the moment, I don't have that much financial dependency on that one. You know, it's uh, I still need the the other profession, but yeah. So, yeah, thanks for sharing. <laughs> <Maybe. but laughs> it's just finding K1 through Bitcoin. It was. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's gonna be uh, on the stone, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, listen, I mean, I, um, I I recently, you know, created this group, this film group on Telegram. So I added uh, Zia and Arman to that group. So I don't know, Zara, if if you want, I can add you to that group too. I don't know if you're in Telegram or not, but that would be awesome if you you know get get your whatever any kind of input or inspiration or ID if you have or, you know, and that's, um, that's also, you know, a, a main topic I want to talk to you about is I've been thinking a lot, you know, like how can we translate this, 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 this beauty of, you know, of, of, of this vision, you know, the, the ethos behind it, the, the, the power, the, the, the economical uh, power, the, the, the structural power that it can, you know, the structural transformation that it can create through Bitcoin, you know. So I wrote a short article, you know, it's called Human Life Rooted in Bitcoin. And I was trying like, to say, you know, there's tons of materials out there already, you know, mostly, of course, in English, which it's it's being a lot of it is being translated into other languages, you know, with it be books or articles. So I'm trying to my best either to do some, you know, interviews also in German, at least for the German speaking folks or or make like readings, like I read the articles in German, uh, especially for German, for a lot of German speaking people, they don't understand, they hardly understand uh, or speak little or none English. So so it's good, you know, if we have a diversified spectrum, you know, of, of languages that people can reach out to, at least on an educational level. But, you know, for me, maybe it's because due to my impatience, <laughs> it's 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 the process is still slow. So I'm I'm thinking, how can we translate? How can we reach the people in the hearts, in the minds, you know, on their specific, very individual comprehension level? We are all, you know, we're all so different. We all different approaches, different pain points, different needs, desires, different visions, dreams. So this is what I've been thinking about, and. Um, so I'm like, what if we do like a short, you know, a relatively short trailer, a teaser, some like a short video, you know, but but as professionally made as possible, but really visualize. That's the key, right? The emphasis is really on visualize, right? Not to intellectualize, not, you know, because it's people, if you look at the, most of the people, especially mainstream people or the average person on the street, you know, they don't have much time. They have responsibilities, they have jobs, they have this and that, they, they are distracted, they have mainstream media bombarding them with bullshit. So this is what I want to ask you, uh, all of you, like, what would, you, what would be, what would you say could be a good, um, like a starting point where you, you know, you, you, uh, what I want to envision, what I want to visualize is what the future could look like. Would it be a free private cities? You know, there are already projects running or seasteading, you know, platforms already built on water and land, or would it be the, you know, a society, a miniaturized human civilization rooted in Bitcoin? What could like the daily life of the average person look like? practically on every level you know structurally economically technologically 
infrastructurally, you know. Any ideas? The door, <laughs> stage is worth. <laughs> Zara, let's begin with you. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, um, it's a hard question, first of all, <laughs> uh, because you cannot probably um, produce something that could uh, touch people's logic, touch people's emotion, touch people's uh the bottom that the bottom that you touch and people just understand that thing this is really hard because it dif it differs um country to country individual to individual but uh what i see that has worked on me at least is to show them what's wrong and give them a good why uh why do you need this money why should we go toward this kind of future and um, just prevent going down that particular path? Uh, when you talk to people about the things that is wrong, they can see it, they can apply it to their lives, to the place they live, and afterwards they can approach to what you are uh, representing which is Bitcoin in their own reason in their own view uh, I believe this is the most effective way to do that localization in a way yeah let me let me ask you one more question do you do you think that people understand the the real power behind Bitcoin, what it can really uh, affect, like what would be the effects, like what is the chain reaction of, because I think a lot of people don't understand, you know, the power structures, the monetary structure, the central bank system, you know, all these monopolies, the cartels, you know, do, do you think people understand the bigger picture in order to go into the comprehension of why Bitcoin and then go, you know, focus yeah. on the solution? <clears throat> exactly you are not willing to change it if you feel comfortable in a very very hot water and just you just live in there because the water has got hotter just a little bit every year every summer uh you just uh, you, you're just gonna boil at the end of the day and you're not gonna know it so when you are boiling, if you see the other lakes and see that they are, they have green skin instead of, you know, red skin, you can understand that something is wrong. Um, so I believe we need to mention directly to the things that we think is wrong with the world, like uh, the central bank, as you said. Uh, why is it bad to have central power? Why is it bad to um, have centralized institutes? You can just tell them that and they can see and apply it in their lives. Like I go to some kind of an institute and I see that only one person is in power and all of the people in that institute, let's call it the language institute, uh, are going to uh, just listen to that person and that person is like a hundred years old and that a hundred years old has very different understanding of language and everything else um, and you are telling like children from 2 to 18 that you need to listen to this kind of uh, a form of uh, teaching, language teaching, that this 100 person, 100 year person tells you to. Okay, so this is obviously wrong. This is wrong. And you need to indicate that. And afterwards, you can just give the solution, decentralization. Decentralization is that you just share the power and you have some particular person for 2 to 10 age, 
you have uh, other people for like 10 to 20, 20 to 30. And this, this approach helps the learners learn better. And you improve uh, profit, you improve um, everything. Okay, so everyone wins. So why not decentralize the, the power of deciding? Why not decentralize the money? I mean, when you share, you're going to get back more. So I believe if everyone understand these concepts and they can know that they can live it in daily life and not just on the internet, I, I totally don't agree with calling Bitcoin internet money. It's not in, in money of the internet. It's not. It's money of new style of living. You know, it's the money of future it's it's something more than that you can apply it to your life and to your decision like i as a as an as an individual i can apply these concepts to my life so why not do that this is the best way i i believe to connect to this network and system and be Bitcoiners at the end of the day, uh, all of us, you know, a network of Bitcoiners, not just a network of people who use Bitcoin. This is not going to work, uh, mm -hmm. in my opinion. That's great. Yeah, that's great input. Um, let me ask you, the, the role of the government, what is, what is, what is uh, the role of the government supposed to be? Isn't it, uh, I'm, 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 I mean, I, I have, I know my position, I know, I know what it is, but or what it should be, but what do you think is the role of the government in this um, whole process? Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. So we are we are saying that um, we are saying that centralization is bad and something is good, and that's not my whole point. No, um, you know, let let me give you an example. In Somali, um, they didn't have a central government for a period of time and i'm not aware if they have it right now or not but when you just uh, omit that part that centralization called government everything is just anarchy we do not want uh, full anarchy nobody wants that nobody benefits from that so uh, the pirates just um, got a lot of people and uh, the shipping has gone bad and there there were a lot of problems that I, I am unfortunately not recalling right now but there were problems because governments are meant to build um, roads governments uh, are meant to um, meet our needs governments need to um, I mean, manage our relationship with other countries. Governments are not bad, okay? But, and we're okay, not let me, saying that. Okay. We're saying that you need to... Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt you, but... but we need could, to specify their... Yeah, but could, could, private, could private companies do that much I, more cheaper and efficiently? I think that's the key question. All these things like protecting um, safety, liberty, security, uh, protecting property, right? Property rights. Uh, could all those things be done not more, much more cheaper, but much more efficiently, faster, and even more innovatively by private, you know, entrepreneurs or companies? You know, that's, uh, I'm going to call it a beautiful idea but we cannot know if it's a practical one too you know we need to oh i hope we haven't lost her now she's frozen are you still there yeah i'm here what about yeah yeah uh, um, yeah I... okay okay she's frozen a little bit uh well she'll come back she'll come back um so yeah um, what, 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 what are your thoughts on this, along these lines? Uh, 
are you referring to me? Sorry. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, sorry for you. Yeah. Uh, so I, I I love some of the ideas because uh, I said I I believe in private stuff. But uh, yeah, that's that's the main thing. Uh, because like uh, like let's let's take the situation here on Iran as an example. Like I'm I'm just right now I was in a very heated debate <laughs> on Twitter on uh, uh, like the, there was a very very unfortunate incident right now uh, happened today in Iran. There was this uh, this athlete who, who was executed today and uh, against what people uh, actually wanted from the government they told like they were yeah uh, so I was I was in this debate that uh, the government did this wrong and he should he shouldn't have been executed just for protesting this is very stupid like where's the human thing to, what is the human thing to do it is like this this person should not be executed so but I see a lot of people a lot of uh, a lot of people supporting the government here and what they did, and this is this is very very frustrating. I know about like the exit strategy. Like uh, I see Arman, I see Kayvon doing the exit strategy from this country, and they did the best thing that they could could have done. I uh, this is my 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 point of view, uh, and I I see the exit strategy for some people is. Uh, like I was thinking that what would be the best country if I wanted to travel to and there was a very fun questionnaire and there was none actually for me so I, I don't believe in this much uh, government because I could see that they could use it for uh, any kind of uh, like actions that would benefit them uh, and they would uh, do these advantages uh, to, to harm people, so I, I'm I'm very into private. Like if we have private property, we have uh, like privacy. We have a lot of stuff which are private, or private, uh, like private places of our own. I, I come from a very uh, uh, like traditional places in Iran. Uh, places where uh, the government didn't have any role until very recently in the last decade. So uh, I, I didn't see it. Com I didn't see the whole picture completely, but I heard a lot from my father and grandfather about this thing that these there were like places where people lived without the intervention of the government, and they were prosperous and they had their own rules and they had their own communities and this is like only logical that we could build something like this uh it's 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 nothing against the, the it's it's not against the tide it's not against uh like uh, uh, basic human instincts and uh, relations yeah so uh i was thinking how could we promote such a thing like you talked about your movie and i love the idea and uh, I, I, I was thinking that this 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 uh, visualization of such an idea would be very good. Like you, uh, when I talk with my friends about such stuff, they say that it's it's not possible and it's very difficult to grasp the idea and all of that. But I know that it's only because of the experience. Uh, you need the you need a little bit of experience in that, and you need to see the whole picture and. Then you're you're going to have an aha moment. You then say, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, this this works. This totally works. But uh, it wouldn't. They they thought that it wouldn't work because they couldn't see the whole picture and they couldn't see how this thing could work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Basically, this. Mm -hmm. How would you, uh, Zio? How would you pitch? the vision to people like to average people who haven't even haven't even probably not really uh, you know dealt with uh, with bitcoin at all maybe they've heard it but how would like i'm thinking what would be because you know in a video in a in a video pitch or in a trailer you have like five minutes or maybe maximum let's say 10 minutes but i'm thinking really more along the lines of a 
of sort of a commercial where you you know pick up the people where they exactly are in that position you know emotionally existentially psychologically and it's becoming more and more crystal clear for me you know like this is i have a very very concrete precise you know specific vision for what the future can realistically look like in 10 years or 20 years let's say you know i can even see it in 10 years from now but um and, you know, because it's just uh, people are so bombarded, so distracted with so much, you know, information overflow and, you know, uh, misinformation and disinformation campaigns, you know, mainstream media and this and that and fear factors and this all this Corona, you know, bullshit. It's it's, you know, scientific fraud and propaganda. And so like p people already like, you know, so plugged in into the matrix. <laughs> so. Uh, so, so I'm thinking like, you know, let's give them really a positive, like, you know, something beyond belief and something beyond hope. Let's give them some, you know, a concrete vision. You know, this is what the reality can look like, you know, in a deflationary economics with deflationary technologies, with, with, you know, with a healthy structural system, you know, where, where private entities can actually take care of, of, of your security, your, 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 your safety, your property. Uh, you know your well-being. You know that's all what we need. You know, and the rest just gonna take to, gonna take care of itself. And that is the free market or free market principles. That is true capitalism because we don't have capitalism any capitalism anymore. So before we go, you know, before before we go right right into the intellectual discussion, you know, why Bitcoin? What the fuck happened in 1971 when we went off the gold standard? You know, the the criminally immune and untouchable central banks, the governments that are you know in collusion with the central banking cartels that are actually themselves whitewashing trillions, trillions, literally trillions of fiat money. <laughs> uh, so these are the things, you know, we don't even need to go there because it goes into the, not necessarily into negativity, but it goes into like, you know, the people, it's a comprehension process. So I'm, I'm trying you know, to, to take that burden off and say, hey, this is the beauty. This is the beautiful vision. This is what what you and your children and your beloved ones and your society, your your, your colleagues, your, everybody around us, total humanity can thrive, can blossom in a civilization that has been actually been stolen from us. If you read like Robert Breedlove's, what was the title? Did you um, something like with money and slavery? You know where he yeah, masters and slaves. Oh, beautiful! A beautiful article where he, you know, explicitly says, you know, how, you know, he calculates like how many hours, like trillions of hours, been stolen from us, you know, through this modern slavery, and it's not only time, but it's the time. Of course, it's the sort of the the expression of everything. Then you know, but. It's everything has been stolen from us. The technological innovations in the last hundred years. I mean, have you ever wondered why we have such, you know, amazing advancements in information technology, computer technology and uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning and not in transportation? Have we ever asked ourselves why we're still burning, you know, why we're still flying with combustion engines, literally? It's, it's, it's insane, you know, if you think about it. So how much, you know, how much technological innovation has been stolen from us and from humanity? So this is what I want to show. This, this, is, this is supposed to be the vision. And then we can still go, you know, into the full production mode of a full documentary. It's going to probably cost 200, 200 to $250,000, but that can be crowdfunded if the pitch, if the, the video, if the, you know, if this trailer is so effective emotionally, you know, on a cognitive level, psychologically, and on a comprehension level, that people are so excited about it that they, for the first time in their, maybe in their lives, you know, understand the true power of Bitcoin. Okay, this is wow. my rant. I, 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 yeah, I, I, that, 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 that could have been the pitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I read your Medium article and it, it, it was a pitch for me. It was okay for me. But I know that not all people would take the red pill easily yeah so you, you're totally right the people are connected to the matrix so deeply connected that they can't see anything beyond what what we are having around us and uh i don't know we need to do this like in in, in it like how you said it we need to give it uh 
and in an emotional way that they could experience what they seeing in front of them. Like I was thinking that, it, like uh, if if there was something like this that could like uh, influence people and that, which could like bring them to such an idea and attract them toward this idea, it would be something like like Bitcoin businesses, bi businesses which are like rooted in Bitcoin, which are working around Bitcoin and such businesses need to exist more. We have some businesses right now, but we need more of these and we will have s such businesses we, because it's the obvious thing. Uh, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 we need to show them Bitcoin businesses and how they can thrive and they can prosper. And this this could get bigger and could magnify, could get magnified and like build a society, a community, let's call it a community, build a community which can work around Bitcoin. Like, uh, look, 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 this thing, this idea that people need it because like, let's say you talked about technology, look at the technology right now. Like, uh, look at how it is being used to control people. Look how the technology is actually evolving to be used by governments like the AI, the like these these the, the digital dictatorship of China and these countries, like uh, we 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 have all experienced and absorbed, and and we've all experienced this that and how quickly it evolves. So imagine all the ways that a state can control people uh, in the future. But this has to stop, and this this is needed to stop that. So if if it's not like cities on the ocean, or something we uh, or something like that, which looks very from sci like futuristic and from sci-fi movies, but it could be like small communities which uh, rotate around their own economy, and they are not dependent on a controlling system of uh, like money, and uh, yeah. This, this this can reduce the power of the state and cut its hands from controlling people. And uh, it, it stops these oppressive uh, governments. And uh, th this way we, we could we could get get our own uh, our um, our own idea of how to build an economy without such establishment. Yeah, I, I, I see Bitcoin a way for this, like you know this uh, this thing that Eric Voorhees, you know Eric Voorhees, mm -hmm. uh, CEO of I think Shapeshift. Yeah, uh, he he said that uh, we need the uh, separation of money from the state, just like the separation of uh, church and state. This this is this is needed for people to uh, to like if if they experience such a thing, we could see. It as a community without without the religion or the freedom of actually uh, choosing one own uh, one owns religion so if we have this idea and we've accomplished such a thing in our history actually we haven't accomplished this in Iran but we if, if, if humanity can accomplish such a thing they can accomplish a, a separation of state and money and money is a freedom. It is is somehow uh, an expression. It is an expression, and we need this freedom to build new ideas, build new stuff, and get away from that matrix and that entanglement with this centralized system, which reduces one's creativity, reduces one's productivity, and uh, controls all of the. Like uh, we we hear a lot about uh, this government planning or central planning and all of that. So if it is planning, who says that you can plan stuff for me? Because people uh, can have a lot of plans. Like there's a very few uh, people in, 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 the, in that body, in that uh, controlling body of the government. And these ideas that come out uh, outside of these people, they got, these are not enough. If, even if there are good ideas, even if they are, there are good countries with good ideas and with uh, good government systems, but these are not enough. Uh, we, we need to go beyond this. Uh, 
I, I've heard about this thing, the great barrier from Elon Musk, you know, you know about the, the idea. So if, if, if there's a way to like, do, like uh, go through this barrier, it is not how we, we are doing stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, can I yeah. ask uh, a question? Sure. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, I totally um, believe and understand things that you're saying, and uh, those are beautiful words, and I stand by them. But there are two things that I want to ask, one about people and one about speed. Uh, about the people, I believe, um, in any century, in any years, we're going to have people who want to um, be ruled. I mean, they don't want to do, uh, they don't want to be autonomous. They want somebody else do the things for them. This is one problem. And the other problem is, uh, is the speed. The speed uh, that Bitcoin is growing is, is good is like all right but one moment one second just imagine about the things is that uh, that is going on uh simultaneously around the world with fiat money how is bitcoin is um how's bitcoin gonna you know win this battle with people and with um, speed. If I answer, the, if I may to answer this. Sure, yeah, thank you. so I, I, I have this idea of like, uh, you know, about like uh, voice and exit and in, in, in private businesses and private structures. Uh, do, do you know this idea? It, it, it says that like if, if an employee uh, is not, uh, is not, uh, consenting about what is going on around him in, the, in a private business, if, it, if his rights are taken or something, he should raise a voice and he should uh, declare that I, I, I don't want this. This is like very bad condition for working or something. And if he's not, uh, if his uh, criteria or his requirements are not met, he can exit. This is, this is a very good strategy for choosing to go by a system that you like, that you want and the, you want to support and uh, work with. Uh, th this is like, I, I imagine with private uh, like communities with, with, uh, with no uh, central authority, I see this like a very good way. Like uh, right now in the world, we have this, but it is being very reduced uh, uh, obviously, nowadays it is very, very limited, and mo most people can't very can't just migrate and go in another another place very easily. But I see that if, if if countries were like built like this, like imagine a Swedish like student who sees that he can't uh, like uh, like continue with the Swedish. Uh, uh, what do you call it, the education system or something for its university, he could go and choose another country and go another place and build his ideas and businesses another place. So this this thing is, is we, I, I'm talking about the choice, this, this freedom of choice. If we have this, if you want to be somehow regulated by community, you can choose the best community for yourself and uh, I guess the it, it 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 goes down to the freedom of choice. This is we can't go lower than this. This this is this is a very basic need, I guess. Thank you, thank you. That was the best answer. Yeah, and let me add to that. You know, I mean, yeah, what this the speed is concerned. You see the. We, what we definitely need is is this critical mass. Uh, I think Corey Clipson talked about you know the intransigence minority, uh, and with it you know you you um, you know you consider it from a global viewpoint or or from a country specific. Would it be you know Iran or Venezuela? Like we have like what 70, 80 million people in Iran. 
uh, what if, you know, what if 10 million people, let's just say, okay, you know, I mean, it's already generous, too generous, maybe too, too much, but 10 million people could be this intransigence minority or this critical mass, right? What if they, you know, all of a sudden started adopting Bitcoin in whatever way? Would it be, you know, starting just hodling and saving and then starting, you know, I mean, the tech is already pretty much evolved. You know, it, it's, it's now much, much easier to use applications, software, mobile wallets, even coin joining, mixing more coins, you know, with Samurai wallets. Everything has become easier, you know, so I think, so what I see also with, with the advancement of technology uh, and with the uh, practical, practical usefulness of technology, would it be, you know, uh, um, satellite kits where you totally are independent of the internet, because this is what we are heading to, right? Uh, what if we don't, what if you don't need the internet? You know, you're not dependent on bandwidth or internet anymore. I mean, that would be, I mean, people are working in that on different, you know, would it be, what is it, global mesh network or lots of mesh, uh, uh, right? I had him on my, on my show from lots of mesh and Ryan Brito, uh, Randy Brito, so all these people are working on this technology. So, uh, and I know, you know, for everything, there's a, there's, a, there's a mature and perfect timing, a perfect place, right? And maybe, yes, maybe this is right now, right now as we speak, maybe this is not the moment. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe you're totally right. Maybe, maybe it needs some maturity, some process, some comprehension process, some pain point. People need to really uh, have so much necessity maybe you know feel the pain the economical social not not necessarily physical but yeah it's actual physical when you're starving when you you know you have no job when you have to, you have to take care of yourself your family your beloved ones it's you know so hard times uh, i don't know what this saying but somehow the hard times uh, create uh, you know strong men or strong people right it's something along those lines so um so but but I'm I don't know but maybe maybe I'm too optimistic uh, but the thing is I'm I have this 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 trust it's beyond belief you know I don't just don't believe in bitcoin I know it's possible we just need to have that trust and trust means knowing and you know uh, trust means knowledge ha knowing that it is possible I have maybe too much conviction I don't know but I have I have so much you know so, such a strong conviction and trust in the power of bitcoin that I know once people individually and collectively, like on a dynamic level, you know, where, where things are just coming together, sometimes, you know, on every level, whether it's be art or creativity, you know, or, or, you know, in science or research, you know, some things are just independently evolving and you don't know why, why it's happening, but it's dynamic, you know. So this is where I see Bitcoin and it's evolving, you know, it's, it's really by, by order of magnitude evolving. But I just want to give this a little bit more in our human space time continuum, this trigger, right? This, this, this accelerate, this acceleration, right? So I want to give this the tipping point. Like this is because usher, you know, I would want to usher into uh, a, a space of freedom. What does freedom mean? You know, even our parents or grandparents probably don't even know or didn't know, you know, what 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 real freedom or hard money means right or what does it mean abundance prosperity real prosperity like uh, what does it mean to to be able to save money with hard money which which used to be gold like right? like until whatever 19th century or something right the decoupling actually for gold started 1914 right before the first world war so it's no coincidence right so how do you finance wars right you go into <laughs> You go into debt and you 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 print uh, you know everything out of it. So so that's what I see. You know, I see on every level a, a structural change. Once we have this uh, uh, critical mass adoption. Perfect, perfect answer. Thank you. Was that the answer to your question, or did I or did I go off the tangent here? Yeah, it was it was beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, this crap. And when you talk and Zia talks, I just fall in love with Bitcoin all over again. How, how are you doing, Armand? <laughs> yeah, so basically, of course, like K1 and Zia, when they're talking, you just close your eyes <laughs> and listen to them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, first of all, I mean, as Zia also said, like what happened to, to Navid, it's I mean, all I'm saying, of course, they're all my, my personal opinion, but I think the 
just mix the the Islamic fascism somehow with the banking system. You know, it's it's already deep shit. It's like, and you cannot even make any objection. And but the situation is that, I mean, what what Zara was asking, like. Uh, the people, you, you're totally right. The, the majority of people, they, they want to, to be ruled. They, uh, they don't see the ability in themselves to become self-sovereign, you know, to, to take more responsibility. It's, it's a quite responsibility. I mean, taking all the money out of your bank and you know it's all in your wallet, but you have to figure out how to increase your privacy, just... Uh, you know, but in the same time, I think like how, how Iran is using Islam as a main religion in the country, uh, that's one of the key factors that uh, the time, it, it might take some time, of course, but uh, what we know, uh, I mean, because the technology is deflationary, that's totally like what, what I'm, I'm working, like I'm working in a field that we are already somehow making the AI for the, the prediction of the failures in the, the wind turbine drive trains. You know, so we're making new monitors based on data analysis and the past historical data set, try to optimize it as much as possible. But if I go to my, my, my employer, like the company, I mean, it's not the biggest one, but it's rather big. Like, I think we are 6,000 or 7,000 globally. I think 6,000, Nordex is, uh, yeah, 5.5 .5 or 6,000. But if I tell them, okay, I want, to, I want to be paid in Bitcoin, you know, I want to get paid in Bitcoin. It's still the majority of, uh, that, that's another point of it. A lot of educated people, uh, they still don't see the, the big picture. They, uh, you know what I mean, right? So somehow, it is still, it takes some more time for the mass adoption. But, but of course, like what k is planning to do, it's a great project. It's like, if we can make it, I mean, I totally, I know somehow like what, what k wants it to be because he, he doesn't want it to be sci-fi. But in the same time, looking at the big picture, it can be keeping it short. Uh, it can really touch, if, if it can touch some hearts, it really worth trying it, of course, and it will. But uh, yeah, I think in Iran, one of the, like, the, the major fact at the moment, the, the current situation is uh, how, how government is ruling the country using, what is it called, as Islam? I mean, I don't want to get into the detail, but... Uh, yeah, the Islamic regime, it's not even a uh, republic, you know, it's, yeah. No, I get you. Yeah, I, I, get wanted, you. To, I <laughs> wanted to add on this, so I, I, I see that, uh, like, uh, like we, all, we all lived in Iran, and we see, we've seen this, and we've experienced stuff, so what, what Arman is saying, I, I believe in that, like, uh, people cannot like uh, grasp the the idea of Bitcoin unless they experience <laughs> what we've seen here. So, but but basically we're, we're not different than others. Like we we may have a, a shitty government here. It's it's actually it's not even a government. It's it's, it's just as what Arman said, but. But still, we're not very different than other people. Like, the government may oppress, but, like, consider this, this idea. They are not more than a bunch of people. There are very few people. Mm -hmm. But this evolution of money, this evolution of money beyond control and censorship, this, uh, this money which gives you self-sovereignty, this idea is much bigger than a bunch of people. Exactly. And this, this, this is this is inevitable. It's it's gonna happen. We here in Iran may feel the need for such a thing more than than other, more than others. We we see it more clearly. We see this picture better than others. 
But regardless of that, it's inevitable and it's going to happen for the whole world. So, yeah, I, I wanted to add this 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 picture. Mm -hmm. Now it's really yeah, that's it's exactly like uh, because yeah, like we, I mean, especially like you guys, we really felt the the inflation. You know, in here, the people they know what inflation is, but literally, even when when you just look at the past like 10, 12 years, you know, when, when we went to, to Malaysia, I'm, I'm coming from really like normal family. My dad has been educated, of course, he, and he, he even served the military during war. And he holds a bachelor degree, he was an accountant, and he was retired. And <laughs> now the, the pension, it's, it's really funny, you know? We were talking about it like some months ago, because when we went to Malaysia, like of course my dad was still supporting us, I was uh, staying with my mom and my younger sister for like uh, nine months, roughly. And uh, so we, we, we were just calculating like how he was supporting us and we were paying for the house. We rented the house and uh, converting all the currencies, uh, the ringgit to, to US dollar. And nowadays, if you want to rent the same house, even if the, the rent is the same, it's still the same, which of course it's not. Uh, the pension that my dad is getting from the uh, the retirement, uh, basically retirement account, hardly covers half of the rent of that house Crazy. from year 2009. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's called inflation, hyperinflation actually. Hyperinflation, yeah. and it's getting worse. It's, yeah. it's getting worse. It's like, but anyway, the idea of, uh, of private cities like why not? I mean, let's just rely on this. It, yeah. It's pure deflation. What, what else do we want? I mean, <laughs> yeah, and as you know, again, uh, and just the basic stuff uh, like taking being taken care of, but much more efficiently, cheaper, better, faster, you know, more and much with with with, with unimaginable innovate, innovative, you know, uh, creativity. So uh, everything, you know, uh, it's just basic stuff. We just need to be taken care of, you know, would it be safety, security, health, you know, with medicine, uh, uh, I don't know, the trash can, you know, <laughs> uh, or, you know, property rights. Right. So guys, uh, yeah, um, before we wrap up, um, Armin, can you hear us? We lost you for a second. Yeah. Are you here? Yeah, I lost you for a second. No problem. No. No, but I really enjoyed our talk. Let's just wrap this up, but I really would love to continue uh, you know, these these kind of talks in the near future with you guys because it gives like specific insights and you know an understanding into the you know into the specifics not only of Iran but like how do you how do you envision like the, the future of, of 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 all of us, you know? um with uh, you know on on the basis of bitcoin so yeah before we wrap up do you do you guys have any last wishes or uh, where can people find you um okay uh guys can i go sure go ahead. Yeah, yeah um i want to tell people that um you should be probabilistic. Um, when you are probabilistic, you are not optimistic and you are not some uh, kind of um, depressed, you know. Uh, I know. Yeah, yeah pessimist. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you are probabilistic, you can just um, get the facts and logic the future you want and uh, that logic in the, the um, future you want will help you build that future. We in this group and in this uh, worldwide community have found uh, Bitcoin to be that thing, that tool to go toward that future that we want and uh, if you find it interesting come join us great 
yeah. See ya, Armin. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to say this because, like, I, I was thinking about it before I, we started this talk. I, I was thinking that, bit, like, Bitcoin is, uh, like, Bitcoin and self sovereignty. It's, it's only logical. It's, uh, like. Like there's this desire in 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 in, uh, in like making profit and doing cooperation with others and uh, Bitcoin has this thing, but and also it it leads to self sovereignty, so people can do cooperation and keep uh, keep like without a central planner and be self sovereign. And like Iranians feel this more than others, and Iranians did. Like, what do they desire? They desire better life, like far from these oppressive and manipulative governments and all of that. And uh, Bitcoin has this potential, and hopefully, it will be in the future. Uh, so it is the case for me right now, and it 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 has become this desire for me for cooperation to get myself sovereignty and uh, build a better life and uh, I, I'm this this is the thing I wanted to say I, I wanted to say that nowadays uh, this cooperation has uh, been in a way that uh, it, it is making me find like-minded people much easily like in comparison to a couple of years ago and this this like I, I don't need to tell people to just join me or something. It is a state of cooperation for self-sovereignty. So, and uh, at the end of the, th the thing, if you want to contact me, I'm on Twitter. So <laughs> just Google me, you're gonna find me easily. Yeah, most people know you. Yeah, so what's your, what's your Twitter handle, by the way, Zara? You gotta unmute yourself. I think is it frozen? <laughs> what? Yeah, please repeat again. Oh, what was your Twitter handle? Maybe you wanted to share that with the listeners. Oh, people can find you. Yeah, yeah, I shared. I've just shared it. It's a couple of number and um, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, it's the hash of my name. The first few words of the hash of my name. It's uh, fifty nine four e fifty one. <laughs> it's my it's my <laughs> username. <laughs> <laughs> so, genius, genius. Okay, cool. Okay, Arman, what's your last wish, and what what is you know the one wish you have for now? I think. I mean, because. Uh, like once I, I really figured out what Bitcoin is, it wasn't that long ago, but I'm like, I put all my life savings in it. You know, it's not that, that much, of course, I'm relatively young, but I'm, I'm like, I don't even care about daily price relative to my income. I'm, I'm buying like aggressively, I'm really buying a lot because I know this thing, it, it's the solution, solution to I mean, look at the, the regime of Iran. They are having guns to their teeth. And what else can we do? As, as you, you also mentioned it, Kayvon, like there's no time to revolution because it's like going back, back in time. It's mm -hmm. like we get much more fucked up. But it's time to, to, to make some evolution. And what's the, the better approach than like just choosing Bitcoin to do it and take power out, out of the hand of the, the corrupt regime. But I'm quite sure it, it will take more time. And, uh, but we have to, of course, the, the bigger community, they have to, uh, and they're still doing it. I mean, making improvements like what uh, the, the, the blog streaming company is doing. And, uh, yeah, the, the lighting network, because now the people are saying yeah, it's way too slow. Of course, let it be slow. I mean, it's much faster than gold. <laughs> but, you know, just to shut their mouths and <laughs> to say, okay, this is the best one. And deflationary, like the scarcity of it, that's, that's the only thing you can have uh, 
through digital world. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I, I'm not very active in social media, but if you want to, to listen to some of my songs, you can find me <laughs> on all of the, the online music streaming platforms like Spotify, Napster, uh, YouTube in Iran. And uh, yeah, let's, I mean, let, uh, let's make some music background for the for the the movie and uh, yeah that would be yeah. awesome yeah that's <laughs> why i have yeah so we're all in that group so i'm gonna uh, zara i'm gonna put you i'm gonna add you to that group if you don't mind later on and uh thank you so much for the talk it re was really inspiration inspirational and i think you're giving you know people not only hope but you know a, a really c more crystal clear vision and 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 um you know, just this knowledge and wisdom and, and people, you know, eventually they have to make up their own minds and form their own opinion and, 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 and know, and just, you know, go into this trusting process because they need to trust, you know, not only themselves, but it's, it's a trust issue. I think we have in this society, that's my perception. So people need to trust and, and know that this is possible. I mean, what, what choice do we have? You know, <laughs> we need to first, uh, as we say, you know, fix the money first and then, and that is Bitcoin. So Bitcoin fixes this. So uh, let's, let's, you know, uh, solve this, these uh, symptoms at the root of the problem. And that is, you know, the, 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 the monetary root, root layer. Uh, so thank you so much again. And uh, hopefully we can, we can, you know, continue along, along this path. All right. Yes. Sure. Good. It was nice meeting you. Sure. Okay. Sure. See you. Yeah. Talking to you. Yeah. Yes. Anna, it was really great. Have a good time there. And let's just yeah. keep in touch. We should do it more. Definitely. Sure. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Good night. All right. How do you like this talk? I really enjoyed this because it gives a totally different new perspectives, vision you know, knowledge, wisdom. So, yeah, and it's, you know, it's Iran is a very unique country with its own, you know, thousands of years old traditions, culture, uh, you know, peaceful, people are peaceful. It's just this regime, the government, you know, the, especially this theocratic, Islamic, fascist, uh, communist-like, central plant, you know, oppressive regime. It's, this is the disgusting part of it. So, um, yeah. So thanks again for your support, for listening. Make sure you follow me on Twitter and follow uh, Arman, Zia, Zara. Uh, and uh, please uh, subscribe, retweet, share uh, this video and write a positive review on any other you know, podcast platform which I'm on um, and on YouTube. I'm also on YouTube. If you want to email me, my email address is hello at thetotalconnector.com or you can, my DMs are open. And yeah, if you can support me, support my, me and uh, my team sort of, it's not my team, but you know, all these people that are cooperating with me on this film project, you know, to give people this beautiful vision, right? The reality of this manifested vision, what is really possible with Bitcoin at the root with on every level you can imagine. This is just, you know, just, just come and, you know, co work with us, cooperate with us. And will it be on a, you know, graphical level, sound, music, engineering, post-production, film production, documentary, whatever experience or skills, talents you have, get in touch with me. So thank you so much again. And uh, my name is Kevin Davani, the Total Connector. Thanks so much for joining the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show.